Well, now that we have a title page for our quiz, we're going to add in several different questions to go along with this quiz so that I have a nice question set. So again, on my Smart Response tab, um, I can see the properties of this page. It tells me that this is a quiz titled Cells. Um, and it gives me some different options for feedback. I always leave it after I stop collecting responses. So when I have stopped the quiz, students will be able to get feedback. Um, you can change it and see what happens um, after all the questions are answered or after each question is answered to give feedback to the students. Um, I generally keep it on after I stop so that, that way I'm in control of when the quiz is starting and stopping and when they can um, get that feedback. So that way I know that I've gone through all the questions and they can get the feedback for that. But you can try any of those options. The progress says this assessment has never been started and that's because I don't have any questions yet. So my next step is definitely that I want to add some questions. Um, I can add a question to the next page. I can make the next page a content page too. So if I wanted to put in content, some information to teach, and then have a question on, on the following page about that content, that's actually a very good tool to use as you're teaching that you can make sure that they've gotten one topic before moving on to the next topic in your class. But for the sake of this quiz, we're just going to add a question to the next page. And when I click that, I get the same options that I had on adding one single question. I can add any of these different types of questions. Um, I'm going to add one of each question throughout this quiz just so you can see each different question type if you haven't had a chance to see them. Normally I wouldn't add every single kind of question in a quiz. I, for the sake of consistency, I'd keep it as one or two types of questions. Um, but in this case, I'm going to add one of each just so you can see what they are all like. So I'm going to start with the yes-no question, so I've got yes-no selected. My next thing is I'm going to type in the question and so that you don't have to sit and watch me type. I already have the questions typed out. I'm just going to paste them in. So the genetic information in the nucleus is called DNA. And my correct answer is yes, that is true. So I make sure that is there. And when I hit finish, I now have my first question in. The genetic information in the nucleus is called DNA, yes and no. And then when that question comes up, my students can choose yes or no on their remotes. But I'm not done. I want to add some more questions. So back on my Smart Response tab, tab I'm going to add a question to the next page, which will give me the next one. So let's add a multiple choice question. I'm going to use the same multiple choice question I did on my single question example that we did earlier. What's the center of the cell called? And I can choose, again, how many choices I want to have. Um, type in my various responses that I want my students to pick from. And then I need to make sure that I have selected the correct answer, which is the nucleus. And I can hit finish and it would appear in my document. But to make things go a little quicker, if I know that I'm going to be adding more and more questions, instead of clicking finish, I can insert another and go ahead and insert my next question without having to go back to the document and then back to adding a question on the side. And you can see it's already inserted my next question on the next page. It's already appeared. But now I have the, already the option to add my next question. So let's do a number question. Let's type in, since I want a number numerical response, how many pairs of chromosomes do humans have? That would be a numerical response that I would want to make sure. I wouldn't want to give them options. I want to actually know that they know this answer. The next, I want to type in that there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. And if you have noticed, this is an opinion question. Um, that is something that's an option on all of them. So if you wanted to give your um, students just an opinion question, do you understand this topic? Or what do you think about this? Um, that would definitely be something that they could be an opinion question about. In this case, I want the actual answer, so I'm going to make sure that's not checked. All right, I have this question, so instead of hitting finish, I do want to insert another one. Let's do a true-false question. Click on next. Um, I want to know true or false if my students know what the process of mitosis is. So mitosis is the process of the cell producing energy from food. Hit next, and that answer is false. Um, so when my students get to see that question, they're going to get to pick from true or false in the remote. 
and they should pick false for that question. And let's do one more. Let's do a multiple answer question. And in this case, I want to know if they know the different parts of this animal and plant cells. So I have which cell parts below are found in both plant and animal cells. And you might want to make sure if a multiple answer, if there's more than one answer you want them to pick, that you say to choose all the correct answers so that there's more than one correct answer so your students know that there should be more than one answer they're inserting. So my next thing I want to put in is I want to add in some of the different options that they can pick from. I want to make sure that there's more than one correct answer. So I'm going to add in some of the different cell parts and some of them are found in both plant and animal cells. Some are found in only one. And then on next, I need to make sure that I selected the ones that are found in both. My question said which are found in both. So I'm going to select the ones that are found in both plant and animal cells. And then since this is my last question, I click on finish. And now I have all the different questions that I have come up with for my students to answer. I can go back to the title page and go question by question to see all my different questions that I've come up with. So now we've added more than one question in and our next thing is going to be that we know that this is our last question. I went down to my very last question. I know it's my last question. So on my smart response, I want to end this quiz. I want to make sure that my smart response system knows that this is the last question of this quiz. I want this, this ended. So I'm going to end the cells here. And it automatically adds a new page for me so that if I want to add some more content on the next topic or I want to add a totally different quiz, I can do that. I don't have to do anything else at this point. But now you can see I now have on my page, I have all this group under group cells because that's my cells quiz. And I have a new group started, which is untitled. I could title it the next topic that I'm giving um, so that my next thing on there is not part of my quiz. So now we have a multiple question quiz. The next step we're going to look at on the next tutorial page is going to be about giving this quiz. So hopefully you can get your quiz made. When you're ready and you have your quiz made, you can come back and see how to administer this multiple question quiz to your students.